applications is projected to grow by 13% from 2021 to 2031. So this is a very high growth rate, which means there's going to be a lot of amazing opportunities for you. And so what we have here is a really cool panel to talk about ways that you can get involved now, as well as ways that Palm Beach County supports the amazing, amazing doctors, surgeons, all the amazing positions we have with Palm Beach Medical Society and Joe DiMaggio. So we're gonna go ahead, um, we're gonna start with a brief introduction from our panelists. We have a couple of different questions we're gonna ask them, and then, like I mentioned, you all are gonna get the chance to talk to them and ask them questions, okay? So use your note sheet, start to think what you might wanna ask, because we're gonna make sure you have plenty of time at the end to do that. So without further ado, um, whoever would like to start first, if you could tell us a little bit about what inspired you, who you are, and what inspired you to pursue your career in the healthcare company that you work with today. Can you go first? Okay. <laughs> um, my name is Michelle Hobson, and um, I have been with Memorial Healthcare System. Um, Joe DiMaggio is part of the system um, for 12 years. Um, I grew up in South Florida, born and raised, always loved being here. I really didn't want to go to college and I wanted to go to FIU, I wanted to go to FAU, but my parents were like, you have to go away. So I went to USF, to the University of South Florida. I majored in everything and anything that they had to offer. I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up, so I just kind of took everything. Um, I spent about two and a half years there. I got me a, my associates and I came home. At FIU, um, I got my bachelor's degree, and when I was just about to graduate, my parents were really ready because it took me about six years. Um, I took an HR class, a human resources class. Um, the human resources class was amazing because I had a great teacher who inspired me and told me, hey, Michelle, I know you're going to school for business, but have you ever thought about human resources? So I got into human resources and majored. Luckily for me, my mom has, has been a pediatric nurse for 43 years at Nicholas Children's Hospital. Um, I was able to get a volunteer experience in human resources while I was in college and taking some classes. Um, and because of that and my internship, um, I wanted to be in human resources but at a hospital because um, it was such a great experience for me. And I volunteered for about a year and a half when I was in college. So um, my background is social work. I, um, when I did my underground, undergrad work, I had a degree in history, a minor in business, and a minor in education. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and I feel like today, you all are under pressure before you even um, get to college because you have so many credits from high school. It's, you have to make a decision really, really fast as far as what you want to do with your future, which is sometimes challenging, but um, I just want you to know that it all works out. So even when I graduated with my bachelor degree, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So um, I knew I liked helping people. I knew uh, I didn't like selling things. I worked in my father's store in retail and always felt like people felt I was taking advantage of them because I was selling them things and the prices were too high or whatever. So. Uh, my husband said, you know, you really like to help people. Why don't you look at a helping profession? And so that was why I ended up getting my master's in social work. Uh, I also volunteered before I got my master's. I worked as a guardian ad litem. I volunteered as a guardian ad litem in Massachusetts, which is where I'm from. And uh, then I got a job working uh, in the mental health field, doing home visits and uh, case management for uh, youth that were... Um, you know, uh, at risk of removal from their home. And I wanted to get some experience before I, I pursued that master's degree to make sure it was a good fit for me. So having those jobs, I was very fortunate I was able to get a job without a master's. I then pursued my master's degree here in Florida. It was one of the reasons I moved here. Uh, one thing to know that Florida is much more affordable than other states. I was from Massachusetts and a master's in social work. Uh, was only available through private universities up there. And I just knew that, um, honestly, social work is not a high salary job, and I wanted to be smart with my education. And so I came down here and went to FIU. I got my residency here in Florida, and then um, got my master's at uh, Florida International University. Uh, through that, I had two internships. Um, one was with the Department of um, uh, DCF, Department of for it was um, children and families, uh, abuse and neglect uh, visits, we'd go to homes. The second one was actually with Memorial uh, 
the memorial system with the SHARE program, they do an outreach, um, an outpatient program for substance use disorders. And so that was my second internship. And it was at that internship with Memorial that uh, I really explored what, what I wanted to do. I never wanted to be a therapist. I always wanted to do community work. And it was my supervisor there that suggested I continue in the medical field because of the flexibility. I had a young child at the time and uh, I wanted I wanted to find a career where there was some flexibility with hours, and I felt that that made sense. And so ever since then, I've worked in the medical field. I've worked in hospice. I've done home visits through Medicare. I um, I worked uh, you know private and for profit, and uh, I actually worked in a program called Caregiver Youth Project that I think is still here at Lake Worth uh, High, and we work with kids that were caregivers. So. Um, and there might be some kids in the room here that are part of that program. So, uh, and now I work for the Medical Society. So there's just so many different ways you can go in the medical field. Uh, HR is a great example. Um, you know, and now what I do is I oversee several programs. And one of the programs I oversee is an education program for community health workers. So as um, was stated, the, the healthcare system is evolving. And um, even, even if you're not a clinical person, but you love the medical field, just know that there are so many opportunities on the horizon. Um, community health workers are frontline healthcare workers that do not need to be licensed, um, and they really focus on patient care and addressing different challenges that patients may, may have. So that's, it in a, I know it's kind of long, it feels like it's a long version, but it was quite a journey to, to get in there on that. And I love two things that both of you mentioned that I think is a really big takeaway from just this one question in itself is that oftentimes I remember for me in high school, we think it's a straight path, right? We think we're gonna do this, this, and this, but being open to the opportunities was something that I really just heard, right? We talked about volunteering, we talked about internships, and you will be amazed at how these experiences can open your eyes and show you, hey, right, especially with medicine, how many different opportunities and paths you can take just in medicine. With nursing, there's so many different types of nurses that you can be. With community health, there's so much that you can do. So being open to those opportunities as they present themselves. Um, and so those, all three things that you did led you to where you are today. So could you just quickly give us a little bit of background in your own words on your organization so they can get some background on that? Um, um, background on my organization? Joe DiMaggio, oh, okay. Um, so, Joe DiMaggio Children's um, is a freestanding children's hospital. It is part of a healthcare system. So, there are six hospitals, part of Memorial Healthcare, but Joe D is the um, only one that um, sees just kids. Um, so, we are in Hollywood. Um, we were, we're four floors, and we're actually expanding up to um, eight floors. So, we'll be opening um, October, November, our next four floors. Um, the great thing that you saw in this video um, for Joe DiMaggio was it's all about the power of play. Um, the entire eighth floor will be a child-like zone. The child-like zone was um, gifted to us by Harsh Brooks. I don't know if anybody knows him in this room, but he is a country singer. And he has 17 child-like zones in the nation. Um, the child-like zones are where you know kids can go and play and try to be normal. Um, when they're going through procedures and things like that at the hospital. So that's a little bit of background. Thank you. So Palm Beach County Medical Society uh, is actually two organizations. Um, we're a 501c6 and a 501c3. A 501c6 is a nonprofit organization, but it's a membership organization. So we have doctors that pay a membership due, and through that membership due, they, um, they, they're part of this organization that has many events throughout the year. Uh, one of the major things that a membership organization for a physician does as a county organization is um, help with uh, different concerns of uh, the profession that the physicians might have. So if there's a certain bill that concerns them regarding medical care, uh, you know, they, they, they work on getting it to Tallahassee, um, and, and basically the FMA is the umbrella that all the county associations fall under. So the FMA is the Florida Medical Association. And then nationally, it's the AMA, which is the American Medical Association. So uh, it's very interesting to see how policy impacts medical care. Uh, you, you, I'm sure you hear it in the news every day. There's, there's issues that, um, that, that are you know, brewing in, in our state and in the country. And, it's really interesting and exciting to 
to be a part of, of, of that and seeing what kinds of changes physicians would like to make. Um, our CEO is actually with the House of Representatives for the state of Florida, which is also really exciting. Her name is Kelly Skinborn. Uh, so we also have a 51C3, which is really where, where I work as a social worker. And uh, that started about 20 years ago, 25 years ago. The Medical Society was 100, 100 years ago. Uh, but the doctors wanted to do more work in the community that were on the board with the society. So they started a 501c3. The advantage of that is people can donate and get a tax, tax break. And then also you can write for grants. As a membership organization, you can't do that. So with the grants, we're able to do a lot of community work. Uh, we help people that are uninsured access care. Uh, we do that through a network of physicians that volunteer care. And that's with uh, the Department of Health that we're able to do that. So patients will come to us, uh, maybe through the clinics, or they'll hear about us through the community. We'll evaluate what resources might be available to them. If they qualify for Medicaid, we'll help them apply. If they qualify for Affordable Care Act, we'll send them to a navigator. And if they don't qualify for anything, we'll see if we have the specialty, and we'll, and we'll help them access that specialty. As I mentioned, we also do a training program for community health workers. And then we're also very involved with, um, we're part of the uh, emergency uh, response coalition uh, throughout the county, where uh, we have a staff member that's very involved with uh, when there's a hurricane and the emergency shelters. And then also if there's, um, with COVID, we did a lot of work with COVID and just getting the word out where vaccines were available, where masks were available. We helped the hospitals and physicians get N95s. So we do a lot of great work in the community um, and a lot of people don't even know we exist. So we don't really get out there that much and tell everybody about what we do, but we do a lot of great work. And so with that, two incredible organizations doing really amazing work here across Palm Beach County and South Florida. So I wanna talk about you two and how you found your skills and your passion within your organization. How would we use that to create a meaningful change in your role? You can talk about maybe a specific project that you've worked on, um, highlight a skill. Can you talk to me a little bit more about that? So, um, like I said, I went to school for human resources. So I worked in human resources um, first for an airline, and then I work now for Memorial Healthcare for 12 years. Um, I have been in human resources and then recruitment for nine and a half years. Um, so when COVID hit, it was really hard with recruitment um, just to get people in. People were scared to come work at the hospital during COVID. So it was very tough. It was a hard position. Um, and I was looking for something really meaningful and impactful. My mom had also got cancer during COVID. And it was like, oh my goodness, what is going on? So um, through all of that, my mom is great. She had great care for Memorial. Um, but I was wondering, you know, what can I do to feel more impactful? What can I do that will inspire me or will inspire others to make an impact? So um, most recently, it's been about four months, <laughs> and I'm the director of community engagement. And with this position, um, I'm already making changes. So we went from six volunteers to 40 volunteers at Joe DiMaggio Children's. We weren't allowed to have volunteers in the hospital because of COVID. Um, I have volunteers ranging from ages to 14, and my oldest volunteer is 96. Um, they spend their days helping out all over the hospital. Um, it's not any direct patient care, but it's just help, helpful work and meaningful for them. Um, I also run the All-Star program, which um, I hope that you guys want to have here at your school. But it also um, is really great because you guys get to do impactful work that um, brings things back to Joe DiMaggio, whether it be fundraising, um, whether it be building joy kits, whether it be doing arts and crafts with kids. Um, so my job, it's inspiring because I get to help others. And I had a totally different change from recruitment, but now I recruit volunteers and people who want to do work from the heart um, and they don't need to get paid for it. So that's kind of my journey into this career. Wonderful, thank you. And I know we'll talk a little bit more about the All-Star program. And that paper in front of you highlights some of those key components of that. Can you start with? Um, so I would say, um, I, I would say the, the most interesting thing that I've been able to do through the work where, where I'm at now is um, developing a training program for community health workers. The way that journey started was when I started at the organization, we, they were conducting a pilot in two clinics with patients 
that were high risk diabetic. So what that means is they had an A1C of eight or above. And if you're diabetic um, and you have an A1C of eight or above, you're at risk for complications. And the goal of that pilot was to uh, provide care coordination to these patients in the clinic. So we were at uh, Found Care, which is an FPHC in West Palm Beach, and Healthcare District Delray, which is also an FPHC in uh, Palm Beach County. And that's a federally qualified health center. So what that means is, you know, there's this network of um, medical care that people access if they have insurance, um, but there's also a network of community health centers and a federally qualified health center is subsidized by the government and it's a place people can go um, either through Medicaid or an Affordable Care Act plan, but also they can uh, access care if they're not insured. And it'll be $25 maybe for a doctor's visit, $25 for labs, which is obviously a lot more affordable than if they were to go to someone in the community uh, for private care. So in this, in this pilot, what we did is we provided one-on-one uh, -on -one interactions uh, with the patients. Uh, I would call several times a month make sure people had access to medications that they needed, make sure people had access to food, make sure that people had access to housing, make sure people had access to transportation, and all of these things that you, you don't necessarily think about are really important to a medical plan of care. So uh, I really felt like that pilot was, um, you know, kind of a, a great way for me to pull together all of, all of everything that I learned over the years. Also about 10 years ago, my younger son was diagnosed with type one diabetes. And um, it was a way for me to also uh, bring together my work and my personal life in a, in a meaningful way. Uh, and it was shocking to me to see how challenging the disease is for someone that doesn't have the same access to insurance. So my, my son is very fortunate that we have great insurance through my husband's work, but many people do not have access to great insurance. And, um, and when, you, when you don't have access to great insurance, it can be a lot more challenging. Just getting supplies, uh, getting insulin, it can be a very expensive disease. Um, and, and there are many tools that can help somebody with diabetes, but oftentimes if you don't have good insurance, you, you don't always have that access. So uh, the, the program um, really was eye-opening and helped me really understand a lot of the challenges people experience. Uh, and even just understanding about what food is healthy and not healthy. Um, a lot of people just kind of assume that if they read a juice bottle and it says no sugar added, that there's no sugar. Uh, that was shocking to me that, that, that people wouldn't know that juice has sugar. So it's simple things like that can really change somebody's life uh, and, their, and their management of, the, of, of their health. So um, from that, we developed a training program. And so to date, we've trained about 225 community health workers that are already working in the community through federally qualified health centers, insurance companies, and help them learn how to assist patients in a meaningful way through asking open-ended questions, um, really, really engaging the patient in a, in a very different way than has been engaged in the past. So um, it's been exciting being a, part, being a part of that development of that training program is probably one of the things I'm, you know, most proud of. Most definitely, that sounds phenomenal. Yeah. And making a big impact because like we know the power of education, it continues to grow and expand, so. I've always um, really liked macro work. I, a lot of people go to school, uh, so get an MSW to become clinicians. A lot of people say, I'm gonna be a therapist, so I'm gonna get an MSW and then I'll get licensed. Um, I never saw that in the cards. I always, so, so I always like, okay, how can, how can I have a bigger impact? So that's called macro. So there's either micro or macro work. And I've always wanted to say, all right, I, it's one thing if I'm doing care coordination, but if I'm training other people how to do care coordination, then it just multiplies. So. I like that, I like that. So with that, I think we already have two key takeaways from our speakers. First, I would say get involved, right? To get involved, take advantage of those opportunities. And number two, I think embrace your creativity because through their creative ideas and their thoughts and their passion, they're able to develop new initiatives. Um, think about it, have volunteers from 14 to 92. You have to have a lot of creative opportunities, right? Because the same thing a 14 year old is interested in probably isn't the same thing that a 92 year old is interested in. And to create an entire training program for high level physicians, is pretty incredible. So two really amazing creative initiatives that are making a big impact again on our community.
So with the room here, we have our future of healthcare. We have our future community workers. They're gonna do some incredible things. I know that. What advice do you have for them from what you've learned in your role um, for a student interested in pursuing a role in the healthcare industry? I would definitely say to get involved now. Try to get the hospital around here. I think it's really important to just see what goes on at the hospital every day. Um, and the other thing is, is find good mentors, find good people to talk to about, you know, your ideas and what inspires you every day. Because I think what inspires me every day changes and evolves all the time. And I've been lucky enough to have lots of great mentors um, in my life, starting with my parents, um, to my teachers, to people that I work with, who have helped me, help me kind of guide me into where I am now. So that's my um, I would say just keep uh, keep your options open. <clears throat> you know, don't get discouraged if uh, if your first uh, you know track doesn't work out. Maybe you struggle with the sciences, or um, you know you, you're looking for volunteer work and you're having a hard time getting there. I just really would encourage you not to give up. Uh, you know, there's definitely been times in my life when I wasn't employed and um, and I I struggled with okay, what's my next job gonna be? And, and I, I was very, very thoughtful about what I wanted. And, and honestly, because I was thoughtful about what I wanted, I was able to find a position that, um, that, that really was very rewarding for me. So, uh, and, and in the process of finding that job, it, it's very easy to get discouraged and, and, and give up on yourself, but just know that, that all you need is one job and different experiences will help you figure out what it is that you want. And just don't give up and believe in yourself and, and just kind of keep telling yourself positive messages when you're down and it feels like nobody's really responding. Um, the volunteer work is a great way to, to get that first job. Um, when I first got my master's degree, I, I had I had one little kid and then I had another little kid. Now they're 21 and 25, and uh, and I wanted to get experience. I had nothing on my resume, and it was really a challenge. And I was fortunate enough that um, I was able to to take the time to volunteer. And my first volunteer position was in hospice. So hospice is also a great way to look if you're looking to volunteer. There's lots of different types of opportunities through hospice. Uh, I started out uh, visiting people and facilities. And then through that, I was able to get per diem work in the care center, and I covered the other social workers when they had vacations, sick time, and it worked out great for me because I, did, I wasn't ready to work full time. But um, it gave me that in and some experience, and then I had something on my resume. And then from there, I started working in home health. And so volunteering, honestly, can be the key to get that first, that first leg into, into an organization and just really showing yourself and proving yourself. Wonderful. And our final question will be some ways that either now they can get involved or in the future when they return to Palm Beach County as doctors, ways that the Medical Society can support them. But before we do that, I want to open the floor to any questions that you all might have at this time. I see a question over there. Yes, let's hear. Cool. So you're going on with our theme here. So let's hear uh, ways to volunteer. Sure. So at Joe DiMaggio, um, there, we do have a volunteer program. We have the application online. Um, you're able to fill it out. Um, we need a transcript and we need a letter of recommendation. As part of the volunteer program, it's four hours required a week. And that can be Monday through Sunday whenever the hospital is a 24-hour operation. So it's kind of when you guys can fit that in. Um, and then basically you'll interview with me <laughs> um, and then we kind of talk about what you're interested in. Um, if you're interested in a whole bunch of things, most certainly we can talk about that, but it is required four hours a week and it is required 100 hours over six months. Um, does that mean that it has to be um, the same schedule? God forbid you have a vacation or schoolwork is a lot or whatever it is, we talk. Um, this way, I'm very flexible. I just want to make sure that you're fulfilling that commitment because at the end, um, I want you to make your volunteer experience the best that you can. So if you're not coming, then it's not going to be that fun. So um, that's how you get to do that.
So those 100 hours would count towards your community service, which can count towards bright futures. It can count towards other scholarships. And I write letters, too. <laughs> Just so you know. I write letters. The college is at the So end. letters of recommendation from Joe DiMaggio. Um, and with that, community service is a huge way to help provide more opportunities for scholarships because oftentimes they have a requirement or it helps them stand out. So we highly recommend, and 100 hours seems like a lot, but four hours a week, it goes by quickly. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you have virtual opportunities as well, or if they do things like on campus here too. Right, so, so that would be, be through the all-star programs, a little bit different than the volunteer program. The all-star program, which we can talk about after, but it doesn't require four hours a week. It requires activities where the volunteer program is signing on for six months for those 100 hours. And are there any ways for students to? So, <clears throat> so we don't see patients on site. Um, we coordinate care for patients, but it's not on site. And um, so if you were to volunteer with us, you wouldn't really have patient interaction. Um, we have had uh, interns uh, that have, through the health administration program at FAU. And so a lot of times, what we have opportunities for is like admin, so not very exciting work. But finally, if you like that kind of stuff, if you like admin stuff, we definitely have opportunities. And again, it counts as community service, and um, and you're able to basically uh, get letters of recommendation the same the same way. The other thing is we do have events. Uh, we have a big gala coming up in December, so that's if you want to, you know see what a nonprofit event looks like and be a part of that. I, I find that absolutely fascinating. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a different aspect when you work in the nonprofit world to see a, a, a gala and, and what that looks like. So a lot of times we'll have volunteers come and help set up during the day. And it's kind of exciting and fun. And, uh, you know, depending on what we need for the night of the gala, it, you know, it, it might be a possibility to volunteer at the actual event as well. So those are a couple, um, you know, little little opportunities. Most definitely, and I think you learn so much about the organizations as well by volunteering in whatever capacity it is. So you can learn a lot about the work that they're doing and how in the future they might do one of your training programs, right? right. When they come back to exactly. Palm Beach County, they might be a doctor or a nurse at Joe DiMaggio. So making these connections and these volunteer opportunities now can help you learn a lot for your future. Thank you both very much. Any other questions as we? Wrap up for today. Yes. Yeah, question. Absolutely. Um, in the Palm Beach Medical Society, you see you guys have a lot of contacts. Right. And um, when you guys are able to make a list for us where these students can go here in Palm Beach County to do community service hours and to get experience. Do you mean like with doctors? With anything, the hospital, doctors, anything. You know, we've never really been asked to do that, and that sounds like a big project. Um, but if a student wanted to help us get that information, you know, that that's a big project. But um, you know, nobody's ever asked us to do that. It's a great idea. Because they need to know. Yeah. Here in Palm Beach. Yeah, it's a it's a great idea, but that that would take quite a bit of time and energy. But it's a great idea. Okay. It's a great idea. Um, so it would take a student or something that has the time to kind of make those calls. It, it's, um, you know, to, to gather that kind of data, you, you'd have to have somebody that could dedicate a good amount of time to organize it. Because um, like Joe DiMaggio, I would have to call Joe DiMaggio and say, what kind of volunteer opportunities do you have? And then, she, and then I've got to get a hold of her. I've got to get her to return my call. I've got to get her to respond to my email and know that I'm not like, you know, selling something. <laughs> and so it's a, it's, it's a fabulous, fabulous idea. I love it. So I'll bring it back to the team. And if we get a volunteer that's uh, able to get that information together, I think it's phenomenal, really. And if there's a student or two here, I would be happy to help with yeah, that. It's so a great, it's a great like idea. It really is. Said volunteer hours, right? Um, phone calls can be a little intimidating to do, but you get to learn that skill as well, which is a good skill to have. I mean, we just so. we just had a physician's son. <laughs> we had a physician's wife reach out to us that her son would like a volunteer opportunity, and um, so I reached out to a couple of the clinics, and it's crickets. So, mm -hmm. so you know, it's a it's a great question, and it's a great ask. I think it is a challenge to find um, organizations in the medical community that are willing to allow people under 18 to have that patient interaction. But like you created, there's 
other opportunities. So people have to be kind of open-minded about what kind of experience they're looking for and willing to get. So um, it's a great idea. Our office is on Forest Hill. So if anybody lives close to Forest Hill, um, you know, I definitely will present it to our CEO. And I mean, I, it's, it's a fabulous idea. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Well, hopefully you're absorbing all of this wonderful information. Again, on your sheets, I think we have at least two great key takeaways. So the first one, get involved, right? Number two, being creative. And number three, I think the opportunities, making opportunities or embracing these opportunities. Um, so if you have some really unique idea, there are ways to make it happen. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of extra hard work, yeah. um, but they are possible. And every single one of you in this room, whatever you set your mind to can be achieved through that hard work, but you just have to keep pushing forward. And remember, like they said, you're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs. And sometimes it won't lead you exactly where you want to be in that moment. We can all tell you that that is a part of life and that is okay. But if you keep working hard, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. Um, so on that note, let's give our panelists a big round of applause.